Hello? Come in. Hi, Mr. Sullivan. I'm Allison. I'm giving you the nurse taking care of you today. I'm going to be doing a neurological assessment. Uh, it's going to take me about 10 minutes. Is now a good time? This is a good time. Wonderful, thank you very much. So now that my hand hygiene has dried and is all complete, I'm gonna go ahead and check your wristband, your hospital band. Can you tell me your na name and date of birth just for verification? Dennis Sullivan, 7 38 Wonderful. Can you tell me the date today? The 26th of November, 2020. Fantastic. Can you tell me where you are? In the hospital. Can you tell me why you're here? been having dizzy spells. Some dizzy spells. We will definitely get that checked out. Uh, so then also another question, do you have any allergies? I do not. And do you have any pain today? Not today. Well that's great news. So I'm looking at my patient. My patient appears as to age. He is smiling. He's well he was smiling a moment ago. He's making eye contact. His speech is clear and coherent. He also appears well nourished. He is dressed appropriately for the weather and the situation. I, I definitely appreciate the shirt. As well as he is sitting upright. Uh, his posture is straight and erect. He had smooth coordinated movement when he came in the room. He does not use an assistive device. He does not appear to be in any signs of distress. Also, he has uh, his skin color is appropriate to ethnicity with pink undertones and uh, and he is also alert and oriented in times for based on the questions I asked. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a respiratory assessment. So first I'm going to inspect your chest wall. Looking at his chest wall configuration, it is in a two to one ratio. His costal angle is roughly 90 degrees. I also do not see any lordosis, scoliosis, or kyphosis. Additionally, the patient has no labored work of breathing. He is uh, breathing very easily, even in symmetric respirations, with no use of accessory muscles uh, that I am noting at this at this point in time. So now I'm going to palpate your chest wall. Uh, can you tell me, do you feel any tenderness? I do not. Wonderful. Now I'm going to palpate the back. Any tenderness? No. Fantastic. I'm going to have you turn your legs this way. Perfect. I'm going to place my hand on your back. Every time that I move my hand, can you please say 99? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Wonderful. Even vibrations felt throughout. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my stethoscope on your back. Every time you feel my stethoscope, can you please take a deep breath in and out? And I would be typically doing this on bare skin. So I have the left upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Left lower lobe. Right lower lobe. We're doing one more. Left lower lobe. Clear vesicular lung sounds heard throughout. So I'll have you face forward again. Perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing on the front every time you feel my stethoscope, and I would be typically placing this on bare skin if you were in a hospital gown. I'll have you breathe in and out. Wonderful. Right upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Right middle lobe. Left lower lobe. Left lower lobe. Right lower lobe. Clear vesicular lung sounds heard throughout. Looking at your neck, I do not see any jugular vein distension. I also don't see any carotid artery pulsation. So I'm going to palpate your carotid artery one at a time. Two plus regular rate and rhythm. Two plus with a regular rate and rhythm. Looking at your chest wall, I don't see any heaves or lifts. I also don't see any apical pulse, uh, pulsations at this time. I'm going to listen to all five cardiac areas, first with the diaphragm and then with the bell. And again, I would be doing this on pure skin. So we have the aortic, which is going to be in the second intercostal space, right storm roar. Harmonic.
Herb's point. Which is in the third intercostal space, left sternal border. Tricuspid. And then the mitral, which is also the apical pulse location. So I'd be listening to this for a full minute. Pretend a full minute went by. And regular rate and rhythm. Also S1, S2 were noted. Aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral. There was no S3 or S4 noted, and there were also no murmurs noted. So now we are on to our neurological component. So I'm going to ask you to remember three words. Dog, train, blue. You can repeat those words after me. Dog, train, blue. Fantastic. Do you have any issues with understanding any of those words, or do you feel like you've learned those words? I've heard those words before. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. So now I'm actually going to have you uh, close your eyes. Go ahead and close your eyes. And can you tell me what you saw? That's actually perfect. Uh, so cranial nerve one is intact. Those were indeed chrysanthemums. So you can open your eyes now. And I'm going to ask you to read a word. Uh, can you please read the word on this blanket? Dave. Wonderful. Cranial nerve two is intact. Next, I'm going to have you look straight ahead at me. And I want you to move just your eyes. Do not move your head. So he's following my finger. I'm watching for smooth coordinated movement and so far I see smooth coordinated movement no presence of nystagmus or strabismus fantastic so since he had smooth coordinated movement with no presence of nystagmus or strabismus that means cranial nerves three four and six are intact next I'm going to do a little bit more hand hygiene so I'm actually going to place my hands on your face so I'm going to palpate your temporomandibular joint can you open and close your jaw very good. And can you move it side to side and protract or push your jaw out and pull back in? Very good. So I didn't feel any popping or any locking. Also, he was able to move the jaw in all those directions. So that means this motor component of cranial nerve 5 is intact. Now I'm going to have you close your eyes and I'm going to lightly touch your forehead, cheek, or chin. So I want you to tell me wherever you feel the touch, your, whether it's your forehead, cheek, or chin. There you go, and then cheek. Wonderful. Forehead. And then just for good measure. Cheek. Fantastic. You can go ahead and open your eyes. So since you felt sensation in your forehead, cheek, and chin, that means the sensory component of cranial nerve five is intact. Now for cranial nerve seven, I'm gonna have you smile. Frown. It's a good frown. Puff out your cheeks. Open up your eyes really wide. Go ahead and close your eyes shut really, really tight. Very good. Since he could move his face in all his expressions, the motor component of cranial nerve 7 is intact. We will not be testing the taste buds, but that would be the sensory component of cranial nerve 7. For cranial nerve 8, I'm actually going to have you turn your knees towards that side again. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand about arm's length behind you. I'm going to have you place your hand just and cover one ear using your tragus. So you're just going to cover up one ear as if you don't want to hear me. And I'm going to whisper two words. Happy Thanksgiving. And can you tell me what words those were? No. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Wonderful. Can you switch? Fantastic. Okay, so whispered words were heard bilaterally. Since whispered words were heard bilaterally, that means sensory 
the sensory component of cranial nerve 8 is intact. So now I'm just going to assist you to stand up. Fantastic. I'm just going to have you stand there just like that and close your eyes. And I'm going to be watching for any sway. He's not swaying. He's not losing his balance. I do this for about 30 seconds. And since he's not swaying, losing his balance, he also has to hit the floor. That means Romberg is negative and the motor component of cranial nerve 8 is intact. Very good. You can open your eyes now. Wonderful. So I'm going to have you sit back down. And the next thing that I would do, if I had a pin light, I would be shining a pin light into the back of his throat. But since I don't, I'm just going to have him open his mouth and go say, ah. Uh. So I'm watching at his uvula. His uvula rises with uh. phonation. Perfect. <laughs> his uvula rises with phonation. I also don't see any pooling of saliva in the back of the throat. He's also not drooling, so that helps indicate that he's swallowing his own saliva. That means cranial nerves 9 and 10 are intact. For cranial nerve 11, can you take your chin and drop it to your chest? Can you take your head and drop it backwards as if you're looking up at the sky? Very good. And then can you take your ear and take it towards your shoulder? And take your ear towards the other shoulder? And can you shake your head as if you're saying, no way, Jose? And then shrug your shoulders up and down. Perfect. So he can move his neck in all of those directions. That means cranial nerve 11 is intact. Then finally, can you say light to tight dynamite? Light, tight, dynamite. Wonderful. His tongue can move in all the directions that we care about, and that means cranial nerve 12 is intact. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check your reflexes. Since I don't have a reflex hammer, I'm going to use this mallet <laughs> to be my reflex hammer. So I'm first going to check the brachial reflex. So can you flip your hand up? Wonderful. So go ahead and give me all your weight. Good. So I'm going to tap. Up, so tilt your hand up a little bit and then you'll... Wonderful. So the brachial reflex is intact. Now I'm going to take your arm like a scarecrow. Go ahead and give me all your weight. Go ahead and relax. Wonderful. And I'm going to tap. Beautiful. So the triceps reflex is intact. And then finally the brachial radialis. <laughs> Great. So the brachial radialis reflex is intact. And then if we were in the hospital setting, I would easily be able to raise up the bed so that way I would want his feet dangling off the floor. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that in this setting. So for the patella reflex, and you can go ahead and put your arm down, that was fantastic. His upper extremity reflexes were two plus. I would be checking them bilaterally and um, I feel assured that they would be two plus, which is normal bilaterally and what we would expect. So then for the patella, so I'd be going right underneath the patella bone and I would tap and I would expect to see a kick out just like that to indicate that his patella is intact. And so then for the last one, I'm actually gonna have you stand up and you'll turn and face the chair. And just put your knee in the chair. Perfect. So this is for the Achilles reflex. So this one is gonna be exactly just above where his sock is ending. So I would be tapping the Achilles. Good, and I'd be watching for his feet to plantar flex, which I saw just a little bit of a twitch in that plantar flexion. Of course, I'm trying not to hit too hard with my mallet here. And so that'd be two plus uh, reflexes in the lower extremities, which is perfect. So now we're gonna have you sit back down one more time. I want to thank you so much for being such a willing participant. And can you tell me those three words I asked of you? Dog train blue. Fantastic. So that means three word recall is intact, which means that his mental status is currently intact. Uh, and that is it for today. Is there anything else that I can get for you? A glass of water. I will gladly grab you. I'll go and grab you a glass of water. In the meantime, uh, here is going to be your pretend call light. Also, I'd make sure that this that his bed or that this chair is locked in the lowest position. So that way, if you were trying to get up, there would be no risk of falls. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Let me do hand hygiene. I'll be back with that water.